Let me walk you through the control settings on your FLX20 system. There are three knobs here. Don't let them intimidate you. The three knobs are really actually quite simple to master, and you can actually start fishing with just three quick adjustments. One, your gain level has to be as low as it can go. Two, you want to be in the N or normal mode. And three, you simply turn the system on until you see the bottom display on the screen. Now you can start fishing. It's that simple. Um, a lot of anglers like to make it more complicated than that, but really it's just that simple. The advantage with the 20X is that you're able to adjust the system for a lot more different scenarios. So let's first, let's talk about the three different switches and how they apply for your fishing. One, as I've already mentioned, the gain knob you always keep in the low position. You can turn up the gain, of course, and it opens up the receiver, but it also makes it very difficult to knock out interference. Uh, that's a big thing to remember. Um, you'll also know that the gain knob can do a, a multiple things. Uh, one of the big advantages is, is that it has access to the IR control. Uh, there are 20 IR settings inside of this device, which means that as you push this button, IR, which means interference rejection, uh, will knock out the interference from anglers around you. With 20 steps of IR capability, you can pretty much knock out any interference. Uh, the system always starts at a number one setting. Every time you turn it off and turn it back on, it'll return back to the original one setting. And so if you've adjusted it five times, you'll have to return back to the five setting if that's what's uh, giving you a clear display. Um, you'll also know that the gain knob can control the night mode feature, uh, which means that uh, sometimes when you're out fishing at night, when you turn the system on, it's just too bright. And I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but when you hold it down, it'll dim the display by 50%, and then you simply press it again, or turn it on, off and on again, and it'll return back to its normal setting. Uh, that's the night mode feature, which is also inside the gain knob. The gain knob can do a few more other things, and I'll get to that in a little bit later. Um, from a fisherman's standpoint, the FLX20 um, is really a workhorse of the product line. It, it's very similar to the 18 in that it has a zoom zone capability, which allows you to zoom in on the bottom six foot of the water column. In this case, uh, it splits the screen in half, so now the entire water column is shown here, and just the bottom six foot is shown here. Um, it works extremely well uh, in all applications, but you can imagine what would happen if you were in 60 or 80 foot of water and this side gave you the resolution as if you were fishing in only six foot of water. That's the unbelievable performance of the FLX20. It really works quite well for perch and walleyes. You also have a AZ12, which is the bottom 12 foot of the water column. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't work here because I'm in too shallow water, it would go up, but uh, it would lock on the bottom 12 foot of the water column. You'll always start in the normal mode, and that's the best way to do it. Um, there's the LP setting, which is low power. Now, low power simply cuts the output of the unit by 50%. Uh, I can actually show this by turning up the unit 50% to get, get to the same looking display as we had normal power. This works very well when you're, when you're in weeds uh, and environments like that. Um, one of the nice things, and one of the reasons we added low power was because so many anglers wanted to fish low power AZ. And to do that, we had to add the low power mode. So now we have a low power AZ feature. Again, it splits the screen. The entire column is here, and just the bottom six foot is shown here. So even when you're in super shallow water, you can use the low power AZ setting, which is very, very popular. Um, you also have the color select option. Um, and um, the color select option, you have three to choose from, and you go to CS, that's the CS setting here. Uh, and here it gives you the color palettes, red, orange, and green, no big thing here. When you push it, then it'll say, oh, you've got red and orange, uh, or red and yellow. Um, and this is really used a lot when you want to fish around vegetation, because uh, it knocks off the weakest signal, which is green, or you can have all red, which can only show the strongest signals when you're fishing. Uh, this is very, very popular in areas where you have a lot of bait fish or even shrimp in the water. It can be very confusing. But the classic three-color Vexlar display is what most people will use, uh, and it works extremely well. Green is your weakest signal. Uh, it'll be maybe fish on the edge of your sonar sound or vegetation. And then orange or yellow will, will start to get a stronger or medium strength signal. And of course, red is when the fish is directly below you. You've selected what you've wanted. When you leave it, it'll always stay in that palette mode until you change it manually back from the CS setting. The way you use the range control is actually quite simple. Uh, the 10 signifies the outer gold ring, the 10 foot dial. And as you go up the scale, it's, it's 10 times two, 10 times three, 10 times four or 40 feet, 10 times eight is 80 feet. 
um, and 10 times 10 is 100 feet in this setting. The way you get to 300 feet, and it's really quite simple, you turn your gain knob, and this is where I brought in the gain knob again, you turn your gain knob all the way down to zero, you push it in and turn it on. Now everything here is multiplied times three. So it'll be 30, 60, 90, 120, 240, and 300. It'll stay in the secondary tier mode unless you turn the system off and turn it back on again. But um, again, just to repeat, if you wanna have access to the 300 foot ranges, you press in the gain knob and turn the system on. Now the 10 basically becomes a 30. For the anglers that want to fish in super deep water, this is a very nice feature. Here is the FLX20 from Vexilar mounted in an Ultra Pack carrying case. You can purchase the FLX20 in two different case configurations the Ultra Pack, like you see here, or a Pro Pack configuration. Both are designed to fit inside of a five gallon bucket, but you will see here that the Pro Pack has a battery openly exposed in the back so you can have access to the terminals if you need them. It has the DD100 digital battery status indicator here, which gives you a digital depth uh, of the water that you're in, and they have you push to test and let you know battery status as well. You get a tackle box, you get a rod holder. It's a very robust system, but not nearly as macho or as fancy as the Ultra Pack. But you can buy the FLX20 in a Pro Pack or in the Ultra Pack configuration, and there's a difference in price. So many people say, well, what's the difference between an FLX Pro Pack and an FLX Ultra Pack? Only the carrying case itself that the unit is mounted into. And let's talk a little bit about this Ultra Pack case. Now, this is really nice, but this system has the battery openly, uh, is totally sealed up inside. It's right inside the system. So you have to use these two screws and it'll drop the door down if you ever want to get access to the battery. But the idea here is that you never need access to the battery. And that's the nice thing about it. It has a master on off switch. It has external power supply a port. So if you want to turn lights on in your fish house, for example, you can power them from these ports, which is really nice. The, the DD100, of course, for digital depth and battery status is also here as well. Um, we have rod holders, you get a tackle box, you get a very substantial handle uh, to hold your float, which a lot of people like, and of course your, your uh, transducer holder in the back. Also be aware, and you may want to look for this because some people call and say they can't find it, but there's a black and red cord that comes out the back and that's your quick charge jack plug that you use for charging your system. All Vexilar systems come with this one amp fully automatic digital charger. All the instructions are right on it to follow, but it's really quite simple. You plug it into the wall, the light will turn green, that means you got power. And then all you do is you simply plug it in to the quick charge jack, like that, and then it'll turn red when it's charging, it'll turn back to green when it's fully charged. Now be aware that some power sources uh, that you connect to may not trip the system from, uh, from uh, red back to green again. So if you come back in the morning and you see it still being red, unplug it from the wall and plug it back in again. And sometimes that'll be enough to trigger the system to show you that it's been fully charged. Uh, you need to charge it at least uh, uh, once a month during the off season, we like you to charge it after every single use. The batteries are pro-rated. Uh, they don't have a two-year warranty on them, folks. So if you abuse the battery in the first year, you're not going to get a new battery. You must take care of your battery, and that means charge it often. After every use is ideal. And uh, that quick charge jack is found on all the systems. Both the uh, Pro Packs got them. Um, and the Ultra Pack uses the same quick charge jack system, and that works really well for keeping your battery charged. It's easy to maintain. The easier it is, the more you want to do it. So charge as often as possible. For fishing, it's really quite simple. One, you want to keep your gain as low as possible at all times. Two, you want to be and always start in the N or normal power mode. And of course, you're just going to simply turn the system on. But before I do that, I want to make sure I wet the face of the transducer. I'll take the transducer and have a little water rubbed on it to make sure it bonds well with the surface of the water when it's down there. And in this case, I'm just suspending it a little ways down the hole. And then I simply turn the system on. Now, you'll have a DD100 mounted on your carrying case. Either the Ultra Pack or the Pro Pack has it. In this case, it's 31.4 feet deep. Now, that'll aid you in setting up the correct depth on the range. I go 10, 20, 30, so you still don't see the bottom. 40, there's the bottom rating. Okay, so now we got a bottom established and we know we're in 
We 31 foot of water and you can see the bottom here. Now you're looking at the entire water column. Now, let me show you here what I'm fishing with. I'm fishing with a small little spoon and a little minnow head, nothing too fancy there, just a small spoon and a minnow head. And I'm gonna drop that baby down the hole. Spoons, in comparison to round body jigs, don't reflect a signal back very much. So you may have to adjust your gain slightly to allow the receiver to see such a small bait. So what I'll do is I'll turn up your gain just a little bit so I can see my lure going down. And here's my lure going down. Oh, here it is here. Here's my lure going down. Turn up my gain a little bit so I can see it. I like to keep my lure in a green or sometimes yellow configuration. And as I get near the bottom, what I'll do is see this, see how small everything looks? And what I'm gonna do now is go to the AZ6 mode. What that does is it splits the screen in half here. So this is the entire water column. And there's my jig near the bottom, just a little thin line. Can't see much, but it's there. I mean, no doubt about it, you can see it. On the zoom zone side, look how much bigger everything is. And that's why anglers go crazy for the zoom zone feature found on the FLX20 because it allows you to zoom in on the bottom six foot of the water column. This resolution is the same if you're in 60 foot of water or in 30 foot of water. It's just fantastic to be able to see what's down there. And all I'll do now is try to fish as much as I possibly can the entire water column to find out where these fish are coming in. Because I don't know if they're going to be right near the bottom. Oh, here comes one near the bottom. Here comes one off the bottom. See, see how the bottom? Oh, there he is. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big one. This is a big fish. This is a big fish, folks. This is a big fish. No lie. This is a big one. And I get the transducer out of the hole as soon as I possibly can because a fish of this size is nothing you want to tangle with with your transducer down the hole. This fish has got me down on my knees. Now, I dropped the little spoon down and shook it on the bottom, and that fish came up and just crushed it. Now, my guess is it could be a 20-pound walleye. Okay, it might not be a 20-pound walleye. It might be something a little bit smaller. It might be an 80-pound sturgeon. I'm only using four pound test. I like light line, a soft little rod, but as you can see, I don't use a bobber because that allows me to adjust to depths very quickly and it doesn't get in the way when I'm fighting the fish. And now I'm fighting this critter out. And he's down there. Ooh, I can't even see him yet. Now I'm gonna have to, have to drill a bigger hole, I think. It is a giant fish. Ladies and gentlemen, it could be the next state record by far the biggest you'll ever see on film this winter. It's a, it's a giant. Come, come into me. It's big, it's big, it's big. It's really big and it's coming up as a giant eel bout. Look at this fish. Look at that fish. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a Lake of the Woods eel pout. This is the prized ling cod of the north. This fish is one of the most prized and cherished game fish on the planet. Yes, sir, it wouldn't have been possible without that new FLX 20. That's right, you gotta have an FLX 20 if you wanna catch great big pout like this, folks. What a dandy. But you know, sometimes they get real slimy and they slip back down the hole. Oops, son of a gun. Well, that's what fishing is. Sometimes it's catching and Sometimes it's letting them go. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs>